real quick, who's from Philadelphia? Let's start there. Yeah, your man, Big Mel. You're going to have to ask for <laughs> So then we got Big Mel in a matching suit with Pete Diddy. No, I'm talking about Paul. Yeah, and um, yeah, that part. So what had happened was he got exposed in 2024. He might have been one of the biggest pillars to fall because you already knew that Diddy was falling, right? And you kind of figured out that Drake was kind of out of here. But you would not have won no bingo questions if you would have said that. Do not allow anything to take you off of your square. It's the same thing like what we see right here. Yeah, it's cloudy. Yeah, it's misty. But it ain't gonna stay like that forever. So let us begin. Um, can everybody see the screen behind us clear, uh, good enough? Yes. Uh, are we blocking it? I want to, you know, because... They, they're gonna, I'm gonna show them. Alright, so I'm gonna share the screen. Okay. Excellent day. Let's get it. Alright, so. The Cat Williams effect, right, is basically what people were touching on earlier about the fact that there is a shift taking place in society. And we've been taught about the Mandela effect, right? But there are many effects that take place. Go ahead and holler at Drew. Um, there are many effects that have taken place in society, but the Cat Williams effect is something that I'm sure that we could all relate to. One of the reasons why we could all relate to the Cat Williams effect is because the Cat Williams video on YouTube is the most watched video on YouTube's history. I'm going to repeat that, right? Because there's, vi there's videos that got billions of views, but the Cat Williams video is the most watched video in YouTube's history in the course of six months. It sits at 70 million right now. So what that means is collectively, 70 million people received a red pill, right? That video was three hours long. Strate um, statistically speaking, for a YouTube video, that is, that is, that's an anomaly. They tell you to make short form content because long form doesn't work anymore. It doesn't perform well. It don't perform well. People don't got time. Or attention spans. Or attention spans. We come out of the one minute TikTok world. Right? Where people's master teaches the four-year-old kid to be dropping bars. 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 One minute, though. So he gave you three hours of what we call sit-down comedy. It wasn't, right? Right. It was scripted. You could tell that Shannon Sharp had received those questions a week earlier. Right. So <laughs> it was a sit-down comedy special. Not a stand-up comedy special. It was, he introduced a new format a conversational sit-down comedy special, the first time that we've ever seen anything like that. And, you know, bro came with, as a comedian, you know what I'm saying? The comedian is often looked at as the jokester or the trickster, right? right? So we even understand in the deck of cards, as well as in spiritual systems, all spiritual systems open up with the opener of the way, or in, let's say, in the African traditional system, that would be a leg bar, SU, and, and, the, and the tarot will be the Joker card, right? Because the whole tarot is the journey of the Joker, right? So we see the opening of the year with the trickster or the jokester, right? These are the people that you will overlook. They're supposed to be the jesters, right? You feel me? But it has always been historically known and nobody can get closer to the king but the jester. The comedian plays an unparalleled role Especially us sitting in the city of Atlanta, I just wanted to take uh, an appreciation real quick. Because I did a video, we, shout out to my brother Julian, he see this all around the um, city shooting this video. And we were going to a lot of different historical sites. And the majority of historical sites in the city of Atlanta are civil rights sites, right? right. Celebrating the icons. These people that took smack so you can, you know what I'm saying, do whatever you do in the city of Atlanta, right? A lot came out of them smacks. You feel me? And these civil rights um, activists had a program and a plan. But before King would go into any city to do his thing, he would send Dick Gregory. 
Because Dick Gregory was the celebrity of celebrities back then, and Dick Gregory could get away with talking to the people, unlike King could, because you can only disarm them with jokes, mm. right? You disarm them with jokes, they're laughing at the shit that normally you would get smacked in the face for. Only a comedian could pull that off. So there's a, a, a slickness and a cleverness to comedy and to the comedian as a social commentarian, bar none, right? Dick Gregory set that precedent in this particular country and there became two different roles that was created in comedy. Right. And those two veins, then you sort of replicate themselves in sports with Jim Brown and OJ. You feel me? Right. All of these things are coming full circle right now and we are living at a time where we're seeing the brilliance and the magnificence of the court jester or the trickster or the comedian who now is having, how can a comedian have the most serious conversation amongst us as a people that has initiated and inaugurated change, right? These niggas got on perms. We're talking Cat Williams and Terrence Howard at this point, right? These are, this is us judging books by the cover. We will overlook them and say, this is the last place information and consciousness is gonna come from, but look who became the game changers in our society. The people that we overlook, the stones that are often rejected. Right. Indeed, indeed. So I want to get right into it, right? <clears throat> There's a dichotomy taking place, okay, where there are three main players, okay, and we we was calling it the KKK before, but. Now it's the KKKKKKK, right? Cat Williams, Kanye West, right? And Kyrie. And then Kendrick. We got a lot of K's kicking ass these days, right? It's something about those K's. Huh? Not the Kardashians. They getting kicked these days. You know what I mean? The opposite of that energy. So these K's, when you hear about the KKK, they represented a certain type of energy. But these K's are representing a whole nother type of energy. It's an energy that's in alignment with the energy that we say that we're tapped into as a people, right? This quote unquote, the sun is waking up. The solar flares are going off. Where in society are we seeing the results of that? Well, what we begin to see is a waking up of a certain particular group of people, right? Because I, I, I just want to say this before I get blue to Mike. Everybody often talks about the thousands that are needed or the millions that we need to make something happen. When you don't realize it just takes one of you. Just one. Just one. Just one. You don't got to be a celebrity. You don't got to be an athlete. You don't got to be an influencer. You just got to be about your purpose. Many of us have been sent here to do things more monumental than a Kyrie Irving, more monumental than a Kanye West, more monumental than a Cat Williams. But because we might not be on these stages with these lights and cameras on us, people might not see the importance in self. So they live vicariously through these characters, right? They're their saviors. Like Kendrick said, I'm not your savior. They do the heavy lifting for the people when they don't want to do it. They speak for you. They talk for you. But the minute they get nailed to a cross, where you at? That's why nobody want to come down here and be a savior. That's, nobody, that's why nobody want to incarnate to be a messenger. Because the minute y'all see some damn nails, y'all go running. He on his own. Right? But these people are putting their careers on the line. They putting their life on the line. Terrence Harrell put his life on the line. Straight up. If, to be ridiculed. To be ridiculed about, his, ridiculed hairdo, about right? his hairdo, right? If he did not have 94 patents, he'd be in a suitcase somewhere and they would be taking all of his hard drives and they, they would throw a case on them. Ridicule him, wipe him out, discredit him, 
and then be popping up with all of his patents the next day and the next week. That's how real it is. So he, we're learning from not the mistakes. We're learning from the power moves of others. He's showing you how to move in a room full of vultures. Nigga, you better get your patents before you pop out conscious, nigga. You want to impress somebody, but you don't got your shit together. They out here murking people. They not playing. You playing with it, but you don't realize you got billion dollar companies shaking in their boots just trillion. because you trillion. 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 Just because you got the audacity to say that they got the caucasity to be lying in our face. For real, for and real. And you got the proof. And you got and, receipts. Right. And you can prove it. So just further proof about the K effect, right? Because we ain't been seeing that many mass shootings. So these brothers is busting their Ks in a whole different way, right? January is the 11th month if we follow in the astrological calendar. But even if we're not, and we say it's the first month, January stands for Janus, which is the two-faced God. So that's in the one and the one, that's an 11. The K is the 11th letter. You know what I'm saying? And Janus or January represents a door or a gateway. That's what the word, that's what Janus represents. So now we're seeing, right, these Ks coming and presenting you with a, with a door. You could get with this or you could get with that. Cat Williams did it. Kyrie Irving did it. Kanye did it and Kendrick did it. Made a whole anthem about it. Pick a side. They not like us. Right. Right? And pick you a side. You can get with this or you can get with that and pick a side. Right? So what is it about what is it about the K's or the cough? You know, in Hebrew, the letter K is cough. You feel me? These are very, very interesting times in terms of our observation. Um, anybody seen any Kyrie uh, playoff uh, highlights? That man deserves an apology. From all of us. Alien. He's an alien, right? He's alien. unreal. So even a day like today when you find Anthony Fauci being grilled by the Senate and the world finally finding out the complicity that the governments have with the corporations to defraud you of your livelihood with the COVID vaccines and the whole pandemic, because he said all that shit was made up. Facts. This man stood his ground, right? and didn't get the jab, didn't get the juice, and now he's out here playing like an alien amongst people who may be uh, biologically compromised, right? This dude is unreal. So the, 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 the Cat Williams effect, you know what I'm saying, is also the Kyrie effect, is also the Kanye effect, because Kanye deserves an apology he too. He deserves an apology. I'm sorry, and I'm not gonna get, you know, I, I, I'll keep it safe, I'll keep it safe. But whatever he was saying, if we was to revisit that conversation, right, and, 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 and go through some receipts, you dig what I'm saying? Then we'll be able to see that there was some credits, some credibility to what was being said. At least where it was like, yo, if I'm trying to inform you that you need to look at this or pay attention to it just for your own personal sake, he was what's called a harbinger. And that's what I was saying back then. The definition of a harbinger is somebody who blows the trumpet, right? right? They're the forerunner. They signal what is to come. So you're looking at the Ks. They, they have operated in the capacity of harbingers. And I feel like I'm treading upon this lecture, so I'm going to give it the mic. No, no, no. No, I'm just adding on to say that, you know, not, not only are they harbingers, right? Mm -hmm. But Kendrick, because you being nice right now, like Kendrick literally nice. laid out he for he, you know he he gave you a forewarning about a, a, a nation a rogue nation because that's who he was trying to tell you about. He was just like them people from that rogue nation. They all got their hands dirty, and this is what they out here doing, right? And he gave you um, the glasses, the rose-colored glasses, in which to look at a group of people who historically you were not even allowed to look at through these glasses. And then later on, right, he planted a seed and then it began to bear fruit, right? So now with all of these protests that are going on at these colleges, where they're not just protesting the war in Gaza or, or the, the, the genocide and whatnot, they are deep diving and they're learning about the quote unquote history of the Zionists. They're learning about the ties between the Rothschilds, the Zionists, King Charles, apartheid, all kind of shit is coming Diamonds out. And 
diamonds, Congo, that, yeah. the Congo. So that like Scooby Doo is out here solving cases, baby. They pulling off masks and they like, oh, it's still them. It's the it's the Spider Man meme where they point around. It's the same person. So he prepped and prepared, and he doesn't get an apology. I don't know why people are not giving him, but he don't need that praise. And I was saying the magic the magical thing about him is that he tapped into what we know as Christ consciousness. And when people look at Christ consciousness, they're looking at Christianity. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who has the power of the sword, which is the, the sword is the word, right? You have an anointed tongue. You could use the crystal with a K. You with a K. The crystals with a K where you could chant down. That's right. That's right. With word, you could the dance. Logos. The logos. He was putting spells on these Negroes. He chanted down Drake. He chanted down Travis Scott. He chanted down. We're talking about Kanye. We're talking about Kanye right now. Oh, who I said? Kendrick. You said Kendrick. Oh, Kendrick. Now nah, I'm talking about Ye. I'm talking about Ye when he popped out and whatnot. So, to begin things off, right, before we get into anything, we have to say that the Cat Williams effect on music, right, is something that needs to be highlighted. This year alone, in the first six months, has given us, right, those of us that are into the arts, Right? Not the BS, not the stuff that everybody was complaining about. Remember, we're still in the 50th year of hip hop. Still. It caps on in August. We're still in the 50th. So, in the 50th, we got the best rap battle in battle rap history. Okay? And, and, and your boy got cooked. Yeah. <laughs> Took some slots of that. We got the slant face killer. All right, Conway, he put out a classic. We got Blue Lips by Schoolboy, he put out a classic. The Vulture Volume 1, he put out Rhapsody, she put out a classic. Shout out to Rhapsody. Shout out to Rhapsody. The Twin Pillars, Red and Blue, we put out a classic. So it's, it's classics coming out right before our very own eyes. What's the, what's the rest of these? Classics, uh, Rock Marciano. He put one out, he got a classic, Moses Rockwell. So there's a lot of music coming out. The next six months is gonna be somebody in the audience putting out a classic. You, you know what I'm talking about? America finna drop a classic. You dig? Right. So we got classics coming, y'all. And I'm, I'm, I'm showing y'all this because answers are being, our uh, prayers are being answered, yes. right? Prayers are being answered, you got the quote unquote emperor with no clothes exposed. You can you couldn't ask for anything better in hip hop. With the climate being that it is. I know some of y'all upset that Aubrey got taken down. That's okay. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. That's alright. I got memories attached to Aubrey. My son's 16. So we grew up to that man. You feel me? But what I know is he was a threat to the culture. Because at the end of the day, we don't need rappers, we need MCs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the brother got up, I thought somebody got up here and say, sisters respect authority. You not gonna respect no nigga in hip hop if the head dude is wearing nail polish and barrettes. I'm sorry. You gonna respect Kendrick though. So people be talking about, we gonna get into the Kendrick talk, I don't wanna talk, you know, I'm gonna I'm wait for that. But. I have videos set up, but this is not, this is a PDF. So there's a video where there was a, a politician in Israel, Tel Aviv to be exact, and she's on a powerful position in government. And there's a video where she's saying that the biggest threat to Tel Aviv, this is all the way in Israel, was the black youth. Mm -hmm. Okay? In now, in America, not over there, they weren't about us. So why, how, and who the hell, and why would that be? Like, people were perplexed. And one of the hangups that I have about what we call new media is that it's old media and, 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 and you know, new banana skins. They not, they don't, look, I come from the Ed Bradley world. Me and this man, my father used to put us in front of 60 Minutes. So there's nobody in the media that is doing no investigations. 
We didn't learn about nothing about Diddy from the media, from the new media. Ain't no Gil Nobles. These podcasters are not journalists. Let's be clear. They, they, they repeat shit. There's a script that they email all of them in the morning, and they are control opposition. Bottom line. They're an extension. Mainly the ones that are based out of New York City. You have to understand, yeah. media is an extension of military. So podcasters, any hip-hop media is an extension of mainstream media because they're literally owned by the same companies. You feel me? And the only game in town is to control the narrative by any means necessary. That's the media's military mandate. Control the narrative. You feel me? So no hip hop media coming out of New York City is necessarily quote unquote independent other than my guy right here, hip hop is real, give him a shout out. Yes, yes. All right? And I, I, I could vouch for all hip hop, right? Those are good dudes. Chuck Creekmore, when I, when I started my journalism career in 2001, like, he was the first one. We had a newspaper called Four Corners. I came in in September. I think that he, like, he helped my um, publisher out in August of that year get started. And he's still a stand-up credible individual in the game. So salute to Chuck Creekmore and all hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? I can vouch for them. So for everybody in the audience, if I get to collect your emails, I will send you the full version of this presentation where you'll see the video, right? And for everybody on Zoom, we have your emails. So when we present to you the replay, we will have this attached. So you'll see the full video. But the reason why we are a threat to the Zionists over there in Tel Aviv, it goes very, very deep. But what it has to do was the fact that they have discovered that we are the lost tribe and there's a messiah amongst us, right? While they are looking for their messiah and it don't look like us. And they not the lost tribe. But they gotta circle us, they gotta be around us and they have to be in control of us because why wouldn't you stay on top of the niggas that you mimicking? Why won't you control your opposition? So being that they the bankers, it is it's easy to control you with money, right? The brother was talking about his relationship. My relationship with money is becoming very sour these days because I ain't attracted to that fiat no more. I'm not attracted to them debt presidents. It's a conflict of interest. That shit don't have no pull on me no more. As I learn about what it is and what it's not, it's not real. I'm attracted to gold, though. That's attracted to me. Uh, the crypto that don't got no dead presidents, that's attracted to me, but not this fiat, not, not this dead dollar. This shit is doing nothing. I don't even carry it in my pocket no more. You feel me? My relationship with that, all things fake gotta go. Even that. So the black threat to Zionism is the fact that you are the chosen people. Do not forget it, and they will not let you forget it. The people over there, that are in Tel Aviv, there's about 10 of those ministers that changed their names so it could sound more Middle Eastern. These are, yeah, these are people who are not from over there. This is a problem, okay? Kanye West, like I said, he called it out and he was one of the first people that we saw fall to the social credit system in America, right? There's a new social credit system in America and what they will do is they will be able to blackball you with your payments. They could freeze your strike. They could freeze your PayPal. They could shut you out of all of the financial systems. They can make it hard for you in the airport. They could do a lot of shit, okay? They're doing it in China, but they're slowly bringing it here. Kanye West is the prime example and they showed you what they would do to people. If they would do it to him, Imagine what they'll do it to somebody that don't got lawyers. So what he did to show you the K effect is he pushed through all of that shit. He was like, you gonna blackball me? You gonna shut, you gonna put me through the social credit system? All of these scary Negroes who are contracted to these trillion dollar corporations. Remember when you sign a contract, what do they own? The name of your likeness. And what can they tell you to do? Shut the they could tell you who you could be friends with. Right. That's called a clearance on an album. So if I did a song with Blue, but Blue is owned by Universal, and I'm owned by Sony, 
They could be like, you and Blue can't go outside and play together today. We don't want y'all to make money together. You gonna let somebody get in the way of, of, of your creativity like that? Not me. That's not what the new artist is about. That's not what the new paradigm is about. That's not what the decentralized, quote unquote, independent artist, you, you, if you got an owner and a boss, you can't even sit with us. You're owned in perpetuity, my genius. You gotta try to get up out of that, right? So Kanye West went independent. He went against his 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 friends turned on him. He got a new group of friends called the Vultures, right? And they went dark on you because he said, "I, you know what? I did the Christ consciousness thing, but I'm on a journey. Do not put me in a box. Do not tell me where I can stop on the journey. Don't tell me how to evolve. Y'all turned your backs on me." Yeah. Man. Shout out to D1. Shout you out know, to D1. But. He made a comment recently on the uh, Math Hopper podcast, and I just really don't understand. I don't think that he understands the nuances. I think that Ye figured out and understood that uh, Christianity as a as a corporate entity is tethered to the Zionists. You know what I'm saying? Where are you going to get your relief or your remedy from? The higher up that you go in Christianity, you're going to run into the people. You're going to run into the Zionists. So he's like, I can't get a, a covering utilizing Christianity as my shield and armor, dealing with these people, you feel me? Because in the backdrop, this is who they answer to. I think that that's a, a wake-up call that our, our, our friend D1 is going to run into eventually. You know what I'm saying? I, I wish that he would have had a little bit more grace with his own quote-unquote Christian brother before he threw him under the bus because he don't practice the Christianity that he practices. Right. There's 4,500 different, no, 45,000 Different, different. different denominations, not the whole fold. 45,000 different denominations of Christianity, right? Why he don't have that same smoke for Christian nationalists? Why he don't have that same smoke for neo-colonialists? Why he don't have that same smoke <laughs> for the evangelists? Why he don't have that same smoke for the Zionists? But you're going to have that same smoke with, 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 with Yay, right? So, in order, like, if I'm going against white Christ, if I'm going against a white Jesus, they're going to paint me as anti-Christian as well. Facts. Right? They're going to paint me as the anti-Christ if I say, yeah, I'm Christian, but I'm representing black Jesus. they like, not over here. Hmm. So he's going to get his wake-up call as well. And I salute that brother. I, I, you know, I acknowledge him. He was the catalyst for the reason that we went and even made this project called 48 Pillars of Power. But... Yeah, man, let's, let's stop on the gate banging. So, as you can see, they put the brother out there. They canceled him. They was ready to wash him up. They were convincing his own people to turn on him. When he was trying to turn the lights on and tell you about an enemy that was lurking, right, who was on the horizon, okay, who showed their hand on our, you know, they basically have showed the world their fangs and whatnot. Anybody that kills children, and runs them over with bulldozers or live. Anybody who, who grapes children and laughs about it. Anybody that massacres elderly people and laughs about it and plays with the, and play and, and, and desecrates the deceased body because they're doing that on TikTok right now as I speak. And I and I encourage you not to go look for it. Okay? Because you can't unsee certain things. But the level of carnage. It's advantageous to be on the cross when you're in America fighting against this beast. Do not turn from your brother if you see him nailed to the cross. Do not turn your eye or your cheek from your sister if you see them going through what they call is tribulations and trials. Because when you get through the fire, if you don't let it burn you up and turn you into ash, we got living proof and examples that you will come out greater. Don't they say it's greater later? How do they say? But we can't take the pain. Mm. Can't take we not. We can't take the pain. Niggas is living a soft life. We can't take the pain. Everybody got full body tax, but we can't take the pain. <laughs> Black people crying and boohooing on TV, getting wild emotional, no results, pouring their heart out. Been doing it since Trayvon. <laughs> Giving up all of their energy 
right? All of their loosh to something that's feeding on you, feeding on fear, feeding on uh, despair, feeding on all of these lower frequencies, feeding on no justice, no peace. So you don't have no peace because you was out here chanting yourself down. I can't breathe and then COVID came. Hands up, don't shoot. They start spraying niggas. You chanted yourself down. Right? Because once again, the power's in the word. And when you find out where these slogans were created, then you be like, damn, they was against us the whole time. But let us continue. So here's these articles saying that Kanye destroyed himself. They wanted you to feel bad. They wanted you to count his money. They wanted you to cancel him, right? But he is uncancelable. Along with a few other people, can't cancel people in the attention economy. <laughs> it's an oxymoron. You can't cancel nobody in a troll economy. There's too many niches alive. There's too many niches to, for you to cancel it. And they'd be like, oh, I can't sit with you at this table. I'm going to go sit at the other 1,000 tables. You can't cancel me. You know what I mean? So... Where they pushed them out of one sector and put them into another one that actually made them better as an as a independent artist. And he was able now to inspire millions of other people to say, you know what? If he could do it, I could do it, right? So the Cat Williams effect is the fact that people are watching, right? They are watching these quote-unquote messianic figures Closely, And the reason why I say that they're messianic is because they're going up against the quote-unquote machine. They are showing you that something is underneath this quote-unquote. They're lifting the veil and, sell, and showing you that there's something behind the curtain. Okay? That is a messenger for the people. And when you come the right, when you come with the right type of energy, it's a messianic energy. Nipsey Hussle had a messianic energy. Henceforth, why when he made transition, he became bigger than life. Right. And let's clarify that. Like you said, we're not talking about walking on water. More yeah. so than when they said the crystals came and he was turning over tables. Are the money changes, right? You're going against injustice. You're going against authority that is displaced. You're going against institutions that don't benefit you and your people. Corrupt institutions. Anyone that's doing that, that's a David versus a Goliath, you know, is identified as one that has a messianic energy, especially if you survive unscathed, right? Then that, that you know, that's evidence that your God is stronger than the ones that you oppose. Right, because they would have crushed you. Because they would have crushed you, right? It's, it's their benefit to get you up out of the way, especially if you are embarrassing them. And again, the only thing they're concerned with is controlling the narrative. But he wrestled the narrative from them. You feel me? And he taught us a vital lesson. That takes messianic energy. Yes, yes. Real quick, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, you said like he was unscathed, but then they take him from being like a billionaire, like one of the fastest, richest black billionaires. Right. Well, he broke the paradigm of cash rules everything around me. Okay. And his paradigm was the creator rules everything around him. And his paradigm was the community rules everything around him. And his paradigm... It was his creativity ruled everything around him. So he was able to show you his personal valuation is him. It's not the I numbers. Off and all of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not the numbers on the screen. And often we're saddled, right, by the fact that we're tethered to a check. So people are scared to pop out because it has financial repercussions, right? They'll crush you financially. But if you want it, like, homie said, like, nah, I'll just go in the forest and throw up a tent. You know what I'm saying? Right. For the integrity of my word, if I got to sleep outside, so be it. If I got to be in my whip, if I got to be, you know, with, right. yeah, if I got to be in my cyber truck, so be it. Right. And then, and right? Then, right. Then, then, then what are you going to do to a person who is totally dismissive of your reins that you utilize to pull them back in? Right. If they're willing to cut that cord themselves, how you going to reach them in the wild? Right. So look, the Cat Williams effect, right? Kanye, independent, right? Because it's been these endorsements. It's been these, it's called attachments. They call it other names. Only thing is attachments. People in the spiritual community, y'all get in attachments in different ways. But when you are 
an athlete or an actor or a rapper, you're getting endorsed. You're getting sponsors. So you got Coca-Cola attached to you. You got McDonald's attached to you. You got Estee Lauder attached to you. And what do they expect from you? That energy that you got. The only reason they attach to you because you got the light. You gonna help sell their product and they gonna cut you some fiat, right? But they gonna feed up, they, your face become affiliated with their brand and everything that their brand is about, right? So if it comes out years later that they was doing child trafficking or if they was doing slave labor, that's on you, buddy, right? And that money that you was getting from them might already be spent up. But now your quote unquote brand, your brand is damaged. So what does every what are, what are you being shown? Cat Williams is independent. Kyrie Irving, Nike dropped him. Well, he got his own kicks. Guess what? Independent. So he's showing you, you build your own brand up. F all of these other brands that we don't know. We we got yeah, we got athletics in the building. Shout out to athletics in the building, right? We know that brand. We got the brother with the wine and whatnot. We got his name is Wine. Shout out to Wine over there. That's Wine with the wine. Cup finish, by the way. Yeah. And the cup finish, and and, and I need one. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We we got independent people in the building. Yeah. So that's what you learning. Get off of the titty of Rome. Get off of the lap of these people. Stop whoring yourself out for these brands. How many times do they got to tell you, you don't mean nothing to them? Right. You don't. Right. Get back to Caesar what is his. Get back right? to what is his. It sounds like a slogan, but what does it look like? <laughs> what does it look like? We are now witnessing these slogans come to life. We're witnessing what it looks like to give back Caesar what is his. We're looking at what it looks like to be Hannibal while you're in Rome. You feel me? You're supposed to sack Rome like Carthage did. Who wants to be Roman? I don't want to be Roman. Look, I got this Versace on, but this is not Versace. This is Versace. Okay? From a design in our community. It's called Saba. You see our melanated people on here? We can do whatever it is that we need to do. If we got them lit, why well, we can't get us lit? Right? And when we understand that about ourselves, that the value is with us, it has always been a, it has never left us. How will we ever look at, I mean, we bought into this, this concept that we have lost value or we're not a valuable people. And that's just because they have convinced us to pay more attention to cost versus value. We know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. You know what I'm saying? So we got finessed out of our quote unquote personal value because we're struggling with brand identity. We're struggling with self identity, right? And we're suffering globally from uh, brand damage. Image so shot. the image is shot, the brand shot. is damaged, and these are the things that need to be restored. You feel me? So when people are coming forward as messianic figures, and a messianic figure is also somebody, you know, you're gonna get nailed to the cross for telling the truth. That within itself is messianic. Right. So if someone is volunteering their vessel and they know what the cost is for volunteering that vessel and they transcend the penalty, that within itself tells you in real time that person has messianic energy. Right. Facts. All right. So like I was saying, the brother linked up with the vultures, right? He went completely opposite to the quote unquote image that he was giving you prior to that. Now, one of the great things about Ye, and this is a lesson that we could learn, especially if we're artists and whatnot, he communicates through his design language. And his design language is his apparel or his uniform and his outfit. Remember, he didn't talk to you niggas when the vibe, when the vultures dropped. He wasn't talking. He was taking pictures. And he was doing his quote unquote, he was talking to you through the, imagery. through the imagery, right? Because he understands the power of the aesthetic. So he showed up, yeah, he showed up in all black. He was tapping into the whole opium movement that Playboy Cardi and them is in, where you see these young, with these young kids, they're into gothic, they're into emo, they're into the quote unquote all black. They got the inverted cross and whatnot. I scared a sister yesterday, she seen my pentagram. She was like, but it's inverted. I was like, are you scared yet? Like, did, did I do the job? God damn. Since when did symbols scare people, right? You need to get out of your spookology, okay? Because if you gave a symbol power over you, then that means that you're not even on a journey like that. 
you still in baby school. You know what I'm talking about? And sometimes people are going to do things, you know, just to test you. So here it is. He popped out. They in all black. They got a different type of energy. You know what I mean? It's a middle finger type of energy. But that energy somehow got him to number one. Right? And you know, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And in this music industry, you got to beat them in the numbers. You got to beat them in their own game. That's the only thing they respect. That's the only thing they respect. So once he did that, they had to come up with some distractions because there was no way that they wanted you Negroes that are trying to be signed to their record labels thinking that you could do it independently. Right? So immediately after that, we got the distraction of the goddamn year, right? Not to say that it was something that the industry put together, but it was something that the industry put together, <laughs> right? So you got the Civil War and hip hop kicking off where everybody was going up against BBL Drizzy. <laughs> Your man's in it, right? And it already has started though because Kanye kicked off the Civil War when he was like, wilding out. He began to draw the line in the sand, right? But this time he was standing on hurt and pain because homie was piping his, his, his whiz and whatnot. So people was like, I don't want to join that fight. You know what I mean? You making it about, you know, Pete Davidson versus you. So it was a little uh, uh, uh. But it was the beginning of that draw, drawing of the line. Then you had the situation would, of course, like that where Kendrick went after Drake and then everything began to unravel. This man right here, in the year 2009, Blue Pill was one of the first people in the community who gave a thorough thesis about who Drake was based off of the constellations, the Draco star system. And he was able to lay out a whole bunch of things. 2010. 2010. But there was one thing that he did where he compared Drake to Jake Scully because that was around the time when Avatar was lit. So Ter Ava Terminator Salvation, yeah. Terminator Salvation and Avatar was out at the same time and both characters were played by Sam Worthington who, who comprised the role of Jake Scully in Avatar who was the dude in the wheelchair. I told y'all back then that that was goddamn Drake, that was Jimmy Brooks. He's a hybrid and then he went and he became the hybrid in the Sprite commercial or the 7-Up commercial. Mm -hmm. I had already called this in a lecture. I did it in the five, Little Five Point in 2010 when we came down here. We went to Serpent Mountain and did a ritual before we came down here to show you as Scorpios, yo, y'all about to y'all about to get introduced to the Draco ritual. You about to get inaugurated, right? Because the procession of the Equinox dealt with moving from we, we, we left from the age of Draco into the age of Ursa Minor, which is the little bear, which is Kanye. So we are literally in an epoch of time that is ruled by these people that you call stars that are actually constellations that represent pockets of energy, right? The way that we could say that he's not just a star, but a constellation, what does his family tree look like? How many stars came from the star known as Kanye? Huh? He's a constellation that has stars within him. You feel me? So we, we called this shit, at least I did, in 2010. Right. So to see it unravel was a beautiful thing. What was exposed, uh, ultimately, it was bigger than Drake versus Kendrick, right? What Kendrick was exposing, being a Hebrew Israelite, was the fact that as somebody who was, you know, who's somebody who was not of that quote unquote messianic tribe, he was showing through the culture that the culture has been hijacked, right? Drake is a placeholder. He is a Neo to the machine. If you remember the movie, The Matrix, there were seven Neos before they perfected him. Five. There was five. So, you know, we, we, got, we got a lot of quote unquote, you know, Neos that they were trying to incorporate or clones for that matter and Aubrey was the best one that they were able to produce. But the emperor has no clothes. And hip hop has been held hostage for many, many years by a fake sound and somebody who, who, who basically, you know, wasn't necessarily comfortable in his own skin. And he was a hybrid and because of the fact it's not a race thing, let's be clear. 
I am not talking about race because race is a construct. It's not real. We're talking about ethnicity. Okay? And and not only that, we talk about ethnicity, but when we're speaking about him being a hybrid, it's his ability to clone sounds. Now, anyone who makes sounds, anyone who is an artist, you know how important authenticity is to your bop, to your vibe, to your sound, to your town. You know what I'm saying? Your town has a rhythm, it has a dialect, it has a whole energy that goes through it. You feel me? And then when we catch regional artists coming out of these towns, it's because they represent the pocket of energy that this town represents. Right. So when Kendrick called out the fact that, you know, uh, uh, Drake uses Atlanta as a factory for, for, for vibes, for sounds, this particular town, that's what this, this, this place gives up. It gives a frequency, it gives a vibration. And if you're able to catch that and catalog it, it's gonna take you to places that are unprecedented. With that, I wanna definitely acknowledge the life and legacy of our brother Rico Wade. Can we give him a, a round of applause, please? Nah, nah, y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. This is Rico Wade, right? This is the this is the godfather of the sound that y'all fell in love with with Outcast, Organized Noise, right? They out, yeah, now they out here catching Ricos and whatnot. But when I came here in 1997 and I heard uh, Goody Mob's album and whatnot. And I tapped into that outcast. I saw them at the tabernacle. It changed my life. Right. So that is what we want to recreate this summer, summer 24, in Atlanta. With all of this talent out here, we want to create a new sound. We want our own Dungeon family. You feel me? We got Andre 3000s in the audience somewhere that need to be found. When we went to see Andre playing flutes the other day at the Jazz Fest, he said if it were not for Rico Wade, you would not have Andre. Because he gave him the impetus to be great. Courage. The, the courage and the confidence. Yes. So we need coaches. We need OGs who don't want to be teenagers. Yes. Right? Yeah. We, we need to snap out of living our third childhood, elders. Right? Let the youth be the youth. It's, yeah. it's, the, count, it's the elders for council in a youth for war. Don't worry, bro. You're not going to miss out yeah. on the Tootsie slide. They're going to call you when it's time. <laughs> but we literally have to be sitting up as, as elders and breaking bread and sending out the youth. So, Because youth for war means I'm going to get you right for this concert. You're going to tear that stage down and we're going to celebrate. But I don't got to be on the stage dancing with you, bro. I'm going to set you up. You're going to come when you're doing your practice. You're going to learn from the people that, that, that this experience. That's the council. But when it comes time to get on the stage, you got to let the youth get on the stage to shine, man. Let them do them. So for the elders, we got to let this thing. Don't let it go. We have to trust. But we got to put the youth through a rites of passage. You can't just assume that you're going to hand the goddamn baton over to somebody that has not proven themselves. Right? So once we develop this quote-unquote rites of passage, then we can see who's going to rise to the quote-unquote occasion. But you have to be willing to loosen up your hand and let go of this shit and let these people shine. You lose nothing in that. You know what I mean? So that's also what this rap battle is representing. We're now living in an era, right? Because it's not Drake versus 20. It's Kendrick versus 20. Because the niggas in Atlanta that he named that was getting the stimulus check from Drake, they can't do nothing with Kendrick. He, he hit a lick with that song with Future, but the rest of them... With strip club, trap culture, knuckle dragon culture, they don't want Kendrick around. Yeah. As you can see, this, the, 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 the media has already changed the narrative. They're not going deep. They're not giving you no real shit about it. They're like, well, Drake won as well. Both of them won. It wasn't that bad. Drake. No, nigga, it was bad. Bad, bad. It was bad, bad. <laughs> that era's done. But they're not reporting it, yeah. That era is done. 
started dying when they locked Doug up. You know what I'm talking about? That era is finished. There's nothing that you could do to resuscitate that. It took more L's than Deontay Wilder. <laughs> to this day. To this day. Right? So what Drake did is Drake came to Atlanta and amplified the bullshit. Ain't no stimulus check. Why he ain't do a song with Big Brother, Little Brother? Why he ain't do a song with India Irene? Why he ain't do a song? Why he ain't do more songs with some of the conscious artists? Why he ain't do a song with B.O.B.? Right? But what does Drake come and do? He come and amplify the bullshit. So he made your city more dangerous. He made your city more of a dot town. He made your city more of a narco state. He made your city more looser than a loose. Because he amplified the BS trying to be down because he'll want to be. And real niggas do real things. So he ain't gonna go nowhere and amplify, you know, what, what Nipsey's message was. He not gonna tap in with La Russell. He's only doing songs with gangbangers, trap niggas, fake gangsters. You know what I mean? And people that's gonna make your life more difficult while getting the ghetto pass. So they tell him, go and play with all the girls in Magic. Go and play with all the girls in Onyx. So go go and walk the bank head, nigga. Do you know what a, what a hood pass? You know how good that is? You from the hood, but you don't know it. You don't even know what a hood pass is. But we give them hood passes, and they get more than what we get from them. Vlad TV got more from Umar Johnson sitting on his couch than Umar Johnson got from being on Vlad. Charlemagne, the girl, got more from everybody that came to the Breakfast Club than they got from him. Because when he on stages for a hundred thousand dollars a a person, when they when they doing all of that mental health shit, how many people from from the conscious community do he bring with them to get a bag? He ran with their cloth and, and leveled up to be the woke god. You know what I'm talking about? So you don't gain from from playing with these degenerates. You 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 the bag. You're the catch. You don't even realize that. So, once again, here's your boy, Drizzy Drake, BBL Drizzy, and he had to get taken down by the one who is seen with the crown of thorns. Let's talk about the, mytho- let's talk about the mythos of what we're seeing. Let's go beyond the surface. Let's take it into the mythology, right? So, here it is. This man right here, he has a song called Yah. This man right here, we've watched his journey as he became a Hebrew Israelite, and he's about what he says he's about. No man is perfect. At least he's trying. But he said he's the biggest hypocrite. And he said he's he's not your savior. He said that. He publicly said that. I'm not your savior. I'm working on me. Stop playing. Let's get that out the way. But I will smoke something real quick in the name of hip-hop. Say this after me, y'all. Higher. Higher. Infinite. Infinite. infinite, Power. Power. Healing. Healing. Our. Our. People. people. We just now have summoned the gods of hip hop. Thank you. Oh, we got Minister Servant. Please clap it up, y'all. We got a legend in the building. Royalty, literally, Minister Servant. Minister Servant in the building. With that being said, family, we got to take a 10-minute break. It is 10 p.m. on the dot. We got food in the building. We got wine in the building. We have merchandise in the building. We got art in the building. What else do we have? We got jewelry in the building in the back. And we have beautiful people who I want to meet each other. So please turn to the person next to you and introduce yourself. And if it's somebody that you know, both of y'all introduce yourself to somebody you don't know. You know what I mean? So we hit a network. The break is 10 minutes. Gonna get me into a fight. You feel me? I said, let me use love instead. Let me approach it with the technique that I was taught when I had this um, transcendental Kundalini experience in 20, 2000 when I took a half of a triple stack. Good ecstasy. I don't recommend it. I'm going to try this at home. But, um, 
Yeah, it showed me to identify people by speaking, by, by sending a light from the pineal to their pineal and sending a light from my heart to their heart and then telepathically communicate with them to acknowledge their existence on some namaste shit like I see the God in you and I'm not responsible for how they respond to me. As long as I, you know what I'm saying, get that out of my way and my system because I can't be the one without the 99. And you know, like eight out of 10 times, it's a positive response. And you kind of like defame them from the, from the spiritual realm by doing it telepathically first. And then you see that they respond to you different. So I was already, I, de I defamed the Cubans or like quick, that was nothing. It was the, all the other people that we had fake apprehensions about that I had to overcome. And when I spoke to them and the spirit and the language of light, then I was able to absorb them into the one. And they no longer was an intimidating factor. And I was no longer intimidating to them because, you know what I'm saying? We all won. I don't know. And we could go around the whole community and the whole world doing this you know, with the homies, because those are our children, those are our brothers and sisters. I mean, who are they but us? Right. So, who? how do we allow some fake wall to be built between us and the hood, or us and the people? Because you think you got some information that, you, that they don't? Right. That part.